hilariously hard to photograph. This guitar comes from Baum. They're a company that's based in Denmark and they pride themselves on super high levels of architecture and design that go into an implementation of a guitar that's really cool. So here are my first reactions and my first impressions. I think that this guitar is one, hilariously hard to photograph. It also is just the coolest possible thing. I mean, I love the aesthetic on this. So I want to run through everything I like about this guitar. Then I'll talk about the things I don't like about this guitar and I'll culminate my thoughts with, hey, if you're in the market, if you're looking for this kind of guitar, is this a thing that you would consider? Let me jump in. Number one, I think that the design is so perfectly integrated in this. This guitar is at a great price point. It's under $2,000. Now, let's get everything out on the front end of what this thing is. This guitar is fully designed in Denmark. It is, wor it is built by a company overseas in China that is building their guitars to their exact specs. Now, the gap between overseas production and American or European production is closing. And this guitar has some really cool stuff going for it. So let's talk about the looks. Let's talk about all of the things I really love about this. The headstock is so unbelievably cool. It really reminds me of the Bigsby headstocks that used to be on Martins. If you're making a guitar, the hardest thing to do is to come up with a unique headstock shape. On the back of this headstock, they have Wilkinson tuners that are absolutely cool and unlike ones I've seen. I thought I had seen all of the open gear tuner options right now. The guitar is really thoughtful, really articulate. Now, let's talk about the materials. Solid Sitka spruce, solid East Indian rosewood back and sides, mahogany neck, ebony bridge, ebony fingerboard. The really cool design continues down the fingerboard in these beautiful butterfly inlays. If a headstock is hard to design, another thing that seems to be really difficult to design is a bridge that feels unique and not derived from another. There's a beautiful cohesion in the design and just 
uh, parallel design elements in the butterflies on the fingerboard to the bridge itself. I really, really like this bridge. It's a cool Gibson style. Like that's where it's pulled some of its etymology and some of its clues in looking like a, like a belly up bridge. Uh, but at the same time, it has some cool bevels and contours. Now let's talk about all the things that I like about how it plays. It plays unbelievably well. It has a narrow neck, has an inch and 11 sixteenths, or it's in millimeters. I'll put the exact millimeters up here somewhere. Uh, when you do the math, it's basically 1.69 inches or 1.68 inches, which is right around inch and 11 sixteenths. This feels like, and Baum is a company, this feels like a guitar for electric guitar players moving over to acoustic guitars. With that said, it is comfy, the action is low, the voice on this guitar is really beautiful and articulate, and uh, it, it, I ended up playing much longer and much better than I normally play on these kinds of review videos. Every now and then I get a guitar that just opens up a new level of creativity and performance. So this guitar, I can't say enough good things about how it sounds. Uh, it is very bright. Part of that is that it has the Diodario XS strings, which are just very inherently bright in themselves. Now let's totally switch gears. Let's talk about the things I don't like about this guitar. Now this guitar, it lacks the full bass response of a guitar uh, made in Europe or Canada or North America. And I don't, I can't totally articulate why. Um, I think it has something to do with just some of the construction, but this guitar is also trying to be a modern guitar and modern guitars are more piano-like. The EQ is a little flatter, a little more mid-pushed, so it wouldn't be as bassy or punchy. I, you know, this guitar, when you look at, well, it's a Sitka Spruce Stop, it's Easton and Rosewood back inside, it's Herringbone. All of the cues your brain tells you is that it should just take your head off and kill a banjo. If you know, you know. But this one just doesn't have that like forward push, present, yeah, doesn't have that thing. Thing number one, thing the most I don't like is just the strap button. What lunatic put it here? And I'm sorry, guys. I have a lot of opinions on strap button placement and uh, this is pretty much wrong, uh, but it's very low down close to the heel. What I don't like about this is if you play this guitar with a strap, you can just put your hand and hold it where it is, you feel it like the whole thing wants to flip forward. So if you move the strap button up closer to the heel, you're still not in the way of your hand. It's also not a cutaway, so you're not gonna be up here that often. I'm not up here that often. As I close my thoughts as to if you're in the market for this under $2,000, they say that 80% of what this guitar comes to be is through their design, and then there's 20% that comes from the construction. I like that. I like that they're owning that, you know, that there is development and there is implementation. And so the implementation, I think, is where this guitar just hangs up. This guitar is for someone that is, once a high fashion, beautiful guitar that is not going to be mixed up or confused with anyone else's performance or guitar playing. I think it's very cool, very modern. I think they're going for a player uh, that holds tradition as cool inspiration, but not the gospel truth, an inalienable component of which you have to always sound like Doc Watson. I like that. I'm into that message. They have stuck the landing so firmly on this. It's amazing what kind of guitars can come out uh, of, uh, of China and out of Asian-made production. Um, and at what price? I mean, 10 years ago, 
this guitar would have been a $3,000 guitar. And now it's under $2,000. So I think all of us win in that. I'm super excited about this. And uh, man, serial number number two. Now, if you want one of these, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below and you're gonna see more information coming from the guys at Baum about these guitars. But this is the Baum Leaper Stage. Uh, this is the black one, which I think is extra, extra cool. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Listen, you have a job. Your job is to fill the world with music and friendship. That's what this channel is about. That phrase came from a guy that I bought a early 70s Martin D35 from. And he was in the throes of dealing with Alzheimer's. And he said that he wanted to help fill the world with music and friendship. So I hung on to that. That stuck with me years ago. And now it's my mission too. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe down below. Check out the links on the Leaper. And uh, man, I'm so glad that we're in it together. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. This one just doesn't have that like forward push present, yeah, doesn't have that thing.